You're listening to a special interview segment for the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. All right, folks, joining us on the show this week, he's going to be appearing at Clutch City Productions Super Show this Saturday out of the Pasadena Convention Center. It's going to be a huge show. Got Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, X-Pac, uh, our past guest Tito Santana, and Greg the Hammer Valentine, as well as many others. The one and only Brutus, the Barber Beefcake. Mr. Beefcake, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thanks for having me on, brother. Oh, we certainly appreciate you coming on, getting ready to go on to the uh, to the Clutch City Productions Super Show at 7902 Fairmont Parkway in Pasadena. Uh, they recently added Buff Bagwell, so they're, it's going to be just a huge sort of NWO reunion. Um, they're going to be offering a li- very limited photo op with uh, with six members of the NWO, only 25 of those available, so you got to cash in on that. Uh, you know, you, as well as Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, X-Pac, Scott Norton, Buff Bagwell, you know, it's just, it's really pumped. Are you getting excited to, to, to go to this uh, this show? Well, absolutely, brother. It's, uh, it's really probably the first uh, NWO really reunion that I, I've done uh, in a, a long, long time. Um, it's, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to scrounge up some good NWO uh, gear to, uh, to to wear. I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have the long blonde hair locks anymore. <laughs> it's hard, you can't just grow those back in four weeks, but <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, We'll do what we can to uh, to make it all good, and uh, you know, it's uh, the fans get two characters in one. You know, they get they get the disciple and they get Bruce Beefcake, so it's kind of a win win for everybody. Absolutely. And you were uh, you were recently at Comic Con this past year. Do you, do you have a lot of fun going to these conventions, meeting your fans and stuff? Oh, I, absolutely, brother. I do a lot of Comic Cons. I'm trying to you know get rescheduled for the New York Comic Con again. I did it last year with me, Tito, and Greg, and and uh, we we do quite a few around around the country, all over the country, and uh, and they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, we you know you get to meet tons and tons of fans. There's thousands and thousands of people there, and you know and the folks get to bring out their their memorabilia, their books, their their, their toys, their action figures, and, and get them signed. It's a great opportunity for people, and uh, you know we enjoy it. Very cool, and that does bring me to my next question. What's uh, what's one of the weirdest things you've been asked to autograph, or one of the strangest person you know, the the strangest person you've encountered? Shoot, brother, uh, that's that's a tough one. I mean, I, I just you know, I, I autograph action figures and towels and shirts and pictures and you know, uh, um, you know, a lot a lot of things. That's nothing really that weird. It's just all it's all it's all good. You know, just um, you know, the fans are great. And then they come out and they they bring whatever they got, you know, and and, and we're glad to sign it. Very cool. And you know, you did mention uh, you do several of these conventions with uh, with Tito and Greg. Uh, do you keep up with any other guys that you used to work with? Well, I see. I just saw uh, Brett Goldberg, Nightheart, Jim Nightheart, uh, Coco Beware, the Nasty Boys, and Greg uh, just a couple days ago. Uh, I see Honky Tonk Man all the time. Uh, uh, Duggan, uh, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, who else? Tony Atlas, uh, Piper, on occasions. You know, I really get to see quite a few of the guys. Oh, very cool. So it's sort of like y'all, you know, you never left the, the wrestling business. It's very, very cool. Um, but yeah, well, actually- I never have, brother. I've still been wrestling all this time. I've never quit wrestling. I just work the independent circuits and uh, do this and do the, uh, you know, the convention circuits. Very cool. And you actually, uh, you know, you, when you first entered the wrestling business, you teamed up with uh, what would become Hulk Hogan. You know, y'all were, y'all were brothers. Then later y'all formed the uh, the, <laughs> the Mega Maniacs. Uh, and, you know, not everybody knows, but y'all, you two are actually best friends in real life. Uh, that's, that's absolutely true. You know, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood, from the same town, went to the same high school, uh, you know, worked out together, uh, broke into business together, trained together. We're brothers and a tag team for the first three or four years in the business, and then tagged up later for many pay per views. And then uh, the last thing we really tagged up for was WrestleMania Nine. You know, it's huge, huge, huge WrestleMania. Very nice. Um, you know, you mentioned that y'all, you know, grew up together, worked out together. You know, what what was it that got you interested in in wrestling? What was that thing where you were like, you know, we could we could probably make a good amount of money doing this. Never was a money thing for me, man. I was a fan. Uh, my, my older sister, uh, you know, used to take me to the wrestling matches uh, in, in Tampa. 
Um, Hulk was <laughs> was a fan. He used to be uh, down at ringside. I was up in the pavilion, you know, just a kid sitting up at, uh, on the along the railing watching. Uh, occasionally, we went to the TV tapings down at the uh, at the, uh, uh, down on Tampa Street or wherever it was in the little little teeny building there, and we occasionally got to meet meet a wrestler or something. And you know, back then, Greg Valentine's father, Johnny Valentine, was one of the top guys, the great Malenko and Eddie Graham and guys like that. And then you know, Dusty Rhodes, uh, the Briscoes, Harley Race. You know, and, and and those guys were running around, running wild, and, and back in those days, and you know, it was nothing. I I never thought I'd be a wrestler. It was nothing. I even had any clue about be doing. You know, but when I, when I ran into Hulk, you know, he was playing music and and running around, and, and uh, you know, just out of high school and and, and uh, doing stuff, and I got into weightlifting, and I just. He he kind of recruited me because none of his friends wanted to. Uh, take a chance and, 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 and get in the wrestling business. And uh, I was a young guy and just nothing to lose. And, and I was, you know, I was in junior college. I was like, I didn't, college didn't seem like the was going anywhere. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to take a chance and, and jump on this train and, and, and you know, and, and run off of Hulk and, and, and try something, try something crazy. Our parents all thought we were crazy and everybody thought we were crazy and, <laughs> Who knew that we were going to become two of the greatest, most popular wrestlers in the history of wrestling? Absolutely. Two young kids That's out of Tampa, Florida. Very cool stuff, you know. It's uh, yeah. history. It's, Fate has a crazy way of making things happen, brother. And it's and it's one of those crazy things. Like you know, you you do what you love and you grow from it. And then you know, your high school reunion comes around. And people are like, "Oh, what do you do?" Oh, well, you know, I. Work in the refineries, or oh, I you're like, no, I travel around the world and wrestle in front of thousands of people, so you know, no big deal. <laughs> you might know my best friend, thousands, brother. <laughs> you know what? This may sound a little arrogant, but I've probably wrestled in front of a billion people, live audiences. Wow. I've been doing this 37 years. We don't have an off season. Mm-hmm. I've wrestled for crowds as big as a hundred thousand at one time. Mm-hmm. So if live audiences. Do the math. I mean, I mean, billion doesn't. It does. I mean, uh, for for TV and the pay per views I've done, it's billions, yeah. billions and billions and billions of people. But literally for live audiences, and you know, you're talking about fifty, sixty thousand, seventy two thousand in Toronto, a hundred thousand in Detroit, you know, sixty thousand in Caps Arena, and fifty thousand here, and seventy thousand in London, and eighty thousand. Over and over, <laughs> all these years, thirty thousand a night, twenty five, thirty thousand a night, arenas all over the country, every single night, thirty thousand, thirty thousand, thirty thousand, thirty thousand, <laughs> year after year, ten years nonstop, ten years, but that's a lot of people. That's you know, nice. the Rolling Stones and all these people, Aerosmith, and they, you know, they, they take years and years and years off in between their their tours. We don't take time off. We wrestle all the time, night after night, day after day. We keep going and going and going like the ever ready bunny. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a continuous thing unless you're injured. And you were actually injured in a, a parasailing uh, accident and had to have plates put um, put in you and just all kind of craziness. But you came back because it's you know it's that the love of the sport. Well, it wasn't the love of the sport; it was the love of God. Uh, you know, God uh, bless me and. Soft to, to to spare my life, brother, because I should not be alive. I sustained injuries no human being has ever survived, and that's a fact, mm. medical fact. I was an experiment. These guys took <laughs> and, and brought in doctors and from all over the place, and they brought in, you know, the titanium and screws from NASA, and they put these things in my head, and they rebuilt oh. me like the like a million dollar man. It would literally cost a million dollars <laughs> to rebuild me and put me back together. And they thought, and nobody ever thought I would even survive it, much less be able to come back from it and recover. And I was able to only by the grace of God itself. And you know, that it's, it's a sign, you know, it was all meant to be. It was not my time to go. Absolutely. And it's a good thing that it wasn't because, you know, you still had, had left you know, work left to do in the business. Absolutely. 
So you mentioned uh, wrestling all over the world in front of thousands upon thousands of, of, of wrestling fans. You know, uh, we talked to Tito. We also talked to uh, to Greg about, you know, wrestling around the world. And they both say, you know, the Madison Square Garden was the arena. You know, can you take us like through your experiences, your first time going through Madison Square Garden as compared to other arenas? Well, I don't but the first time, but the first real big show was WrestleMania 1. Mm-hmm. Russell Bruno San Martino's son. I mean, that was, you know, that was the first really, really, really big show. It was sold out. The Felt Forum Below with 10,000 people sold out. Pay-per-view around the world sold out. Everything sold out, sold out. I mean, yeah, Madison Square Gardens, you know, it's just it's the mecca, okay? You know, people all over the world, musicians, uh, you know, the bands, uh, people who perform uh, come from all over this planet and, and to, to perform at Madison Square Gardens is is a great honor. It's a big privilege. And, you know, and everybody who's all uh, who's ever performed there is it's something that you take with you and that you never forget. You know, and the people who witness, they witness it, they never forget. You know, and I've had the privilege of performing there. 50 times. <laughs> so, so you, you, you do the math, man. You figure it out. I mean, what kind of, you know, it's unbelievable. It's very cool. You know, just to have, have those kind of experiences and you actually, you know, as you left the, the WWF at the time, you know, you went to WCW and you, you came in as the, uh, as the disciple, you know, no one recognized you. You did, you know, a complete personality change. You changed your look, just everything. Uh, you know, can you? What was your experience like uh, in your time in WCW? Well, I mean, the Cyborg wasn't the first character. Uh, the problem was that the WWF uh, illegally trademarked my name when I was there, mm-hmm. and so when I left the territory, I wasn't able to 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 go to WCW and use Bruce Beefcake. Uh, I was in in legal battles for many many years over that those issues and because of that i was called the booty man <laughs> i was in the dungeon of doom as uh the zodiac uh i was called the butcher i did several other you know some characters and then it got to the point where some of the <clears throat> people at wcw thought you know i said you know we've we've done all these things with brutus we really can't repackage him again and and uh you know and hulk and i looked at each other and said, you know, this, you know, and, all, and and they were complaining at the time, like, we need more talent. We need talent. And Hulk says, so what, what are you talking about? You got Brutus here. He's one of the best wrestlers, one of the top guys in, in, in the wrestling business ever. What do you mean you don't have talent? Oh, well, we we can't repackage them. We said, well, you know what? Let's, let's just see about that. And we just dropped out. I just dropped out of sight for about eight months and, Boom, and then came back, and I dropped 45 pounds, grew my hair out, I grew a beard, changed my entire look, got mm-hmm. all the stuff, and then walked in. And they, the office people, then nobody even had a clue <laughs> that that was me. And we said, is this good enough for <laughs> you guys? Okay, you can't repackage me? <clears throat> I guess you're a little <laughs> bit wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's move on here and uh, let's do business. And uh, that's what we did. Very it's nice. just a shame they wouldn't let me wrestle very much. And uh, I only had limited participation. I was, you know, I got to hang out and, and do some stuff here and there, but they really didn't, you know, you know, because of the powers that be, I don't even go into that. <laughs> they, uh, there was some favoritism being showed to certain people. And uh, so I didn't get the opportunities I really should have got, but, you know, I'm just happy that I was able to be there and able to to continue my career. And then eventually, you know, Brutus Beefcake um, came back. And, and now that's, you know, main, that's my main character and everything. And if mm-hmm. anything ever happens again on TV, it'll definitely be Brutus Beefcake. Very nice. And we do have some, uh, some listener questions for you. Um, you know, one person asked, uh, did you ever feel buried by the egos of other wrestlers in the WWF? You know, even though you were one of their all-time favorites, it seemed, you know, tough to be able to stand up next to the hugeness of Hulkster and the names of Honky Tonk, Honky Tonk Man, Ted DiBiase, et cetera. Um, no, no, I didn't have a problem at all, brother. I, I um, had 
I run wrestling against Hawkster in arenas all over this country, night after night, sold out in advance. Then I had uh, pay-per-view matches as Hulk Hogan's partner and pay-per-views and multiple, multiple pay-per-views and sold out events and huge pay-per-views all over this country. You know, as far as selling out arenas and putting asses in seats, my record is probably right up there as good as uh, or better as good as Macho Man's or any any of the top of the top guys mm-hmm. ever in this business. And and so I have nothing whatsoever to be ashamed of, or nothing to even to, 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 to even doubt about my abilities and my uh, as far as drawing money in this business and 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 putting asses in seats and in pay per views and on TV and on and, and, and live events, you know, against anybody, anywhere, anytime, and and to this day we're still doing the same thing. Very cool stuff. Uh, another listener question: uh, Do you have any desire to be in the uh, in the WWE Hall of Fame? And also, if if so, who would you want to induct you? Um, definitely, you know, it's you know, wouldn't be bad to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, there's been a lot of talk and speculation in the last year or two, and and then I know this year there's even a lot more interest. Um, you know what? Uh, if Hulkster or Greg Valentine or one of those guys were to induct me, it'd be a great honor. Very cool. Uh, also, who was your favorite opponent, and what match would you like to be against them in? Well, you know, uh, Hulk was a great, a great guy to wrestle. Uh, you know, there's no doubt, no question about that. Mr. Perfect was probably one of my favorite opponents. We had incredibly, crazily good matches anywhere and any and everywhere we ever wrestled. People had real hard problems ever following our matches and um you know it would have been great to uh had perfect had i not had a, a nearly life-ending accident and had perfect not died you know uh a, a second rematch with me and perfect at wrestlemania you know obviously i won the first uh bout when i beat perfect and ended this perfect record in the toronto dome seventy two thousand. you know a rematch of that match would have been great very nice. And final uh, final question for you. Any crazy road stories? Crazy road I know there's a million of those. Um, <laughs> shoot, I think one of the funniest ones I can think of is the Andre the Giant story. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard this one, but we were I used to go to Japan a lot years before I even started really with WWF. Um and I wrestled for the uh, Inoki group, which is was the WWF group. The Baba group was more the other uh, the other group, uh, the NWA group. <clears throat> and uh, Andre went over for our group. We were on a 747 coming home from Japan, and uh, obviously, you know, Andre and 600 pounds didn't fit in the bathroom. <laughs> And, uh, you know, fortunately, he was – normally, he usually timed everything. So, you know, if, if he needed to use the really use the facilities, he, he he would, you know, he would go before he had to, to, you know, get on the plane. The trip was, you know, you're, you're talking about like 18, 20-hour trips, you know, on a plane. And um, unfortunately, he had, he had to take a dump on the plane, and, and he just couldn't get in the bathroom, so they had a – they strung a garbage bag in the galley in the back of the plane across, you know, in, in the galley from one side to the other. They strung a big garbage bag and he had to shit in the garbage bag. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the, the smell, uh, I mean, you know, you this guy's 600 pounds. I mean, he takes a dump like, like, like a, you know, a thoroughbred horse. I mean, the thing is huge, you know, and, and then the smell from it, that came out of the back of the plane was insane. And the people, there was people just gagging and choking <laughs> and puking and, and, and all the wrestlers. It was, you know, there was quite a few of us on the plane. We were all freaking laughing and just, just, just I'm laughing our asses off. Just, just tried out of control. It was just the craziest, funniest thing. The poor stewardesses all ran to the front of the plane and they were trying to hide and, you know, and, and, and it was just, 
I mean, it was crazy because, I mean, the people were just really literally gagging and choking. And there was some people, a couple of people that threw up and everything. And then the, 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 the flight attendants had to go in the back and take this big bag of shit and tie it all up and, 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 and deal with it. You know, and I mean, it was just, I mean, we just laughed for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and it was probably, that was probably the most funniest, craziest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, wow. uh, as far as on the road, <laughs> had to drop the uh, oxygen mask for the for the passengers. Huh? <laughs> Almost, I mean, the, the whole back of the plane just there was a, the stench was unbelievable. They, they had some spray, and the, you know the stewardess was walking around trying to trying to spray and <laughs> use the whole can up and, huh? <laughs> and, and, and kill and kill and kill the smell. But I mean, it was just it was unkillable. Wow, well, that's uh, an interesting, definitely an interesting tale. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, not sure how I feel about that one, but, uh, you know, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, it's certainly been a pleasure having you on. You're going to be, once again, out at the Clutch City Productions Super Show this Saturday out at the Pasadena Convention Center, along with Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, X-Pac, and many, many more. So basically just call it an, an NWO reunion out at 7902 Fairmont Parkway in Pasadena. Go to clutchcityproductions.com for more information on that. Do you have any uh, any social media sites that people can uh, can find you on? Uh, I have, um, you know, my Facebook is actually under my real name, Edward H. Leslie. Um, we'll have to post. I'm sure we've got something posted, but, um, you know, that's that's probably the extent of, um, of my social media stuff. I do some Twitter and this and that occasionally. I've been just pretty busy lately, but, um, um, you know, people can, uh, they can, if they look, they can find me. Awesome. We certainly do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, have, have fun. Uh, hope to see you out there at the Clutch City Productions Super Show. And uh, once again, thanks for thanks for coming on. Oh, you're welcome, brother. We'll be there. All right. Have a good night. All right. You bet. Mm-hmm.